quality of this new labor movement that you're forging. Fighting for the decent standard of living that Roosevelt had pledged in the Economic Bill of Rights. I call for legislation to guard the toilers in the factory and to ensure them a fair wage and protection from the dangers of their trades. From all of you good workers, good news to you I'll tell of how the good old union has come in here to dwell. Tell me which side are you? In 2013, when I came to the AFL-CIO, um, our president, President Trumpka, decided that you know the that the labor movement needs to address criminal justice, and we need to address it from multiple uh, places. One, because we represent people that work in the system, and two, because there are people when they come out that we actually want to figure out how we can help them become union members. Since Maria and I started working together, she mm -hmm. said, "I want to talk to folks that are inside of the prison," and so this is the culmination of years and years and years of us trying to figure out who's gonna let us come in and talk to them about some of the issues that we've been thinking about over the past couple of years. We're understaffed and we have entirely too many incarcerated people to watch on a daily basis. It's hard on both sides of the avenue for the inmates and for the officers and the staff members that watch them. It's um, emotionally taxing. It's gonna take a, a, a bunch of different things. It's gonna take where to spend the money where to get the legislation reform changed, what kind of practices we're gonna use, change in the laws. The labor movement is a complex family, right? We have the workers of the system and we also have the people who are formerly incarcerated. That's pretty telling. So we are the formerly incarcerated that got a second chance through a good union job. This is the home of TRAC, which stands for Trades Related Apprenticeship Coaching. It is a pre-apprenticeship program, and we work with the carpenters, the iron workers, and the laborers' unions apprenticeships. All the trades have gotten women from this program consistently. Our TRAC coach has his train real, real hard. The iron workers, the laborers, and the carpenters come out and test us. And once we qualify and um, get our certificates in those, we are direct entry into all three of those unions which coming out of prison making 18 to 26 dollars an hour is not bad. People need to be able to work. That's why it's great that our unions are here, not only speaking for the workers of our society, but also helping to train more workers. I mean, it shouldn't be the best services you get in our society or when you get locked up as a poor person in America. We can be independent. We Absolutely. don't need anybody else. We don't need a man to take care of us. I can take care of my kids now, just yeah. me. That's what's up, you know? When individuals get into the system, it's a cycle. And it's an economic cycle that puts them in a cycle of poverty, where they have lack of opportunities, and they end up being a burden on society that we've created. The working people that make up America's labor movement care about mass incarceration because not only of the moral implications, but because it has a negative impact on our economy, our competitiveness as a country, and the overall goals that we have in order to move our country forward in an electoral and political context. Being here gave me some hope, knowing that all of these unions represent so many communities and so many people. And if their leadership is saying this is something important for us to think about, then I, it gives me hope. You're my end and my beginning. Even when I lose, I'm winning. My father was a United Auto Worker for 30 years. And you never stop being a United Auto Worker. It's always a part of who you are and it's a part of how you provide for your family. And we know that we are weaker as a nation when our unions are weaker. We're stronger when our unions are stronger. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you.